for some applications of the dot and cross product today. And um, basically, it's things like areas of parallelograms and uh, their equivalent in 3D. So the preamble just did a little bit about talking about uh, projections. Um, did it make sense to people? Sort of. What did you think, Meg? So it was good. a projection is just. I did, but I can't remember what it was. Sometimes I do that. So what was it? It was like, uh, do you remember RJ? Uh, it was like Wow. Uh, like, are you talking about like the magnitude of projected factors? Yeah, that that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Absolute P, uh, absolute U, cosine angle. Oh okay. Let's see. Absolute U. Right. So that's uh. So that's uh that's a derived uh that's a derived formula. Um, we can actually do uh, u dot v over the absolute value of v. And so that's the magnitude of the projected vector. Ultimately, we got there through that whole cosine deal loop. And then um, this is the magnitude of the vector. And then we can actually change it into... Um, we can change it into a vector that's in the direction of the one we're projecting onto by multiplying it by the unit vector. Okay. So this is the magnitude. Of the projection. And this is the unit vector in the direction. So that's going to get us a vector that's the right size there, and it's going to get us a vector that's the right direction. So this is actually the projection of u on v. I kind of did it backwards. I had the projection of v on u. So we got partway into that. Okay, so, that, so that's kind of a review of that, uh, what the preamble was about. Just all the stuff you had to go to to find out what, uh, find a nice dot product for the magnitude of the projected vector and then the direction. Okay, does that summarize it? Roughly? Kind of? Would it be okay if I erase that, Meg? Are you writing it down? You're good. All good. Okay. The first application is actually the uh, area of a parallelogram. And this doesn't actually involve a, a projection per se, but uh, it winds up using the cross product. So it's so it's sort of a nice, easy first application. So there's my parallelogram. The two sides are defined by two vectors, u and v. And we've got an angle in here that is theta. Who remembers the formula for the area of the parallelogram? Uh, length times width. Well, that's a special kind of parallelogram. So that's the. Uh, holy cow, Megan, you're here twice. Yeah. My computer, my internet's not happy and it keeps like dropping the call. And then when I come back in, there's two of me, and then one of me will disappear in like a couple of minutes. <laughs> It's 
So it's not exactly length times width. Do you know what it actually is? Uh, close. So it's actually uh, height times base. So that tells us the area of a parallelogram. Because it's a little bit squashed, we can't go with length, time, length times width. So if I want to find the height, but I know the size of u, uh, what's the formula for finding height based on theta? Anybody? Sign. Yeah, we're going to use sine, that's right. So we can go the magnitude of u times the sine of theta is equal to the height. And the magnitude of v is going to be the base. So I can actually change my area into magnitude of u times the magnitude of v, which is the base. Oops, I know that doesn't calculate the height yet. Times the sine of theta. So this is the area of my parallelogram. Does anybody recognize that formula? Um, oh, sorry, RJ. I can't quite make, make out what you're saying. Area um, the dot product's actually u v cos theta. Um, uh, u v sine theta is actually the cross product, the magnitude of the cross product. And so this is actually the cross product of or the magnitude of the cross product of u and v. So cross product actually winds up being able to calculate the area of the parallelogram. Now I've spent a good deal of time making a parallelogram. And unfortunately, I made kind of a simple one. So, um, is it beautiful? Yesterday, I um, yesterday I told RJ that you could only do cross product on uh, three-dimensional vectors, which is true. Um, so I made a parallelogram, and basically, the parallelogram is. Um, it's, it's three-dimensional, except that all the z-coordinates are zero. So it's going to make the cross product really easy to calculate. Okay. So if you want to copy down, just copy down the parallelogram and its coordinates. And uh, we're going to do the cross product, and we'll calculate the area of the parallelogram. Does everybody have that? Say that one more time, RJ. Oh, do we need the fourth point? Is that what you said? Yeah. Uh, we really don't need the fourth point. All we need are those, uh, we just need those two vectors, U and V. Because they're position vectors, um, we can actually just write down, we don't have to do any tail, tip, subtraction. We can actually write down u and v. And yesterday we looked at a kind of an arcane way of figuring out how to do the dot product. So we start with y, then we go to z, and then we go to x, and then we go to y. Um, so I was showing RJ there's a second way we can set that up. So we can actually write out u twice. 
and we can write out v twice. Okay, so this is x, y, z, x, y, z. And we're just going to ignore this part and this part. And then we're going to go through our pattern to figure out what the cross product is. You notice there's a lot of zero, there's enough zeros in here that it makes it super simple to calculate. Okay, so it's 1 times 0 minus 0 times 3. So u cross v is equal to 1 times 0 minus 0 times 3 is 0. Then it's 0 times 1 minus 2 times 0, which is also 0. Now for the hard part. 2 times 3 minus 1 times 1, which is 5. So my cross product vec vector is actually 0, 0, 5. This just makes things so much easier. Can, uh, can anybody tell me how long that vector is? <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Yeah, that's right. So the magnitude of the cross product is actually five units. And if we actually... Uh, we actually go on to find the area of that parallelogram. Uh, the actual area of the parallelogram winds up being five units as well. You can see it over here. So, yeah, the area of that parallelogram is equal to the magnitude of the cross product. Now, just to prove that it's actually three-dimensional, uh, uh-oh, woo! There we go. When I say there we go, I mean there we don't go. A little hard to control. <laughs> okay, so there's my three-dimensional parallelogram there. And basically it's just sitting flat on the XY plane. And, oh, I didn't want to show that just yet. Now, GeoGebra has also calculated the, uh, it has also calculated or is showing the cross product vector. So I'm just going to get rid of the axis here. Sorry, this is turning into a little bit of a, turning into something of a sideshow here. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the axis. So it's calculated the cross product. Can everybody see the cross product vector right here, labeled U1? Okay. So U1's actually perpendicular to the, you can see it's perpendicular to that parallelogram. And the length of that cross product vector is exactly equal to the area of the parallelogram. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, perfect. Now, we're going to take this thing to three dimensions. So I'm going to zoom in. We won't worry so much about the cross product, uh, about that cross product um, vector for now. 
But basically what we've got here, or what I've constructed, is the three-dimensional version of a parallelogram. It's called a parallelopite. And what I'll do, I'll actually turn that one off. Okay. Oops. There we go. What am I making here? I'm not making anything for now. Okay, it was a thing of beauty a little while ago. Sorry, everybody. I had my segments. I don't know where they went. They've all been hidden. Maybe I deleted them all by accident. Okay, I can I can rebuild it. A vector at a time. Okay, I'm sorry, but this is supposed to be a nice three-dimensional. Uh, supposed to be a nice three-dimensional parallelogram, and it's not. Instead, it's something really awkward, so we might have to go back to the, might have to go back to the good old days of uh, just drawing one on the board. Anyways, it's a three-dimensional parallelogram, and it consists of two, uh, I can, uh, sorry, identical parallelograms, one on top of the other. And what we want to do is we want to find what we want to do is we want to find the actual volume of what's known as the parallelopipe. Okay, and it consists of a parallelogram and on top of that there's an identical parallelogram that makes the top of it. So, I don't know, does that look 3D to you? Somebody tell me that looks great. Yeah. Sorry, RJ, you sound a bit like a robot from here. Okay, so the volume is equal to the area of the base. times the height. So if the base is defined by U and V, actually calculate that by the cross product of those magnitude and the cross product of those two vectors.
So this is actually where we start to use a projection. We need to find the height of the parallelopipe. And the height of the parallelopipe is a little bit tricky to find. I haven't drawn it very well here. But we actually need to project uh, W onto the cross product of U and V. Okay, so this vector, I'm going to move W over here. So this vector represents U cross B, V. In order to find the height of this parallelogram or parallelopipe, we actually have to project W onto U cross V to find that height. Okay, so we just do the projection and we're going to multiply that by the, uh, so there's our height, and here's the area of the base. And you'll notice that these two cancel. And we're left with this nice simple expression that's going to tell us basically what the volume is. So it's going to be the height vector and a dot product with the cross product of the two base vectors. So that actually calculates our volume. Okay. Everybody all right with that one? It's a little bit awkward with the drawing. Is that? Is this insane, Megan? Oh, no. The um, my internet or something keeps booting me off. I've done it like eight times. I'm so over it. <laughs> Do you have this part? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Everybody's caught up. RJ, you're caught up. Luke, you're ready to go. Okay. So the last one is work. So this is that good old physics definition of work. So work is actually the projection of F onto D. Because if you remember when we are, uh, were applying a force on an angle, uh, we actually just project the, we just use that portion of, or that component of force that's actually acting in the direction of the distance. multiply back by the magnitude of the distance. Okay? So really, this isn't any different than what we always did in physics, which was to find the, uh, which was to find the component of force that was acting in the direction that we were going, and then uh, multiplying that by distance.
or it's just the dot product. So a wagon is pulled 300 meters. by a force of 160 newtons applied uh, at an angle of 20 degrees to the road. How much work is done? So these, uh, these look familiar to everybody here, I think. So this is our uh, free body diagram. And what we have to do is we have to project uh, our force vector onto our displacement vector. And then we have to multiply it by the displacement vector. So the projection of the force vector onto the displacement vector is 160 newtons times cosine of 20 degrees, and then that's going to be times 300 meters. That's going to be equal to our work. And what's the answer? Megan. Forty-five thousand one hundred and five. Forty-five thousand. What's that? Oh, Megan. Yeah. Oh. Forty-five thousand. Should be pretty high, yeah. Yeah. Is that what you got, Luke? Okay. Yes. Oh, I just got a different answer. What'd you get, Luke? Uh, it was like 45 feet per hour. I actually did it. 45.105? Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's 45 degrees per hour, 45 degrees per hour. That's right. So, and what are the units for work, RJ? Uh, there's new meters, or there's work is in jewels.
Okay. Um, so I think we're going to do uh, questions one through six of the exercises. So number six is actually finding the volume of a parallel pipe. And I don't think we're going to worry too much about the work, uh, doing some, a bunch of work calculations. Okay, so, so number one is just doing some projections. So we'll just do some projections down to number six. There we go. Hey, Luke, how's, uh, how's the assignment for coming? Did you... Uh